Welcome to another edition of the Farmcast presented by 21st Century Equipment. Got Troy Randall here with me and Preston Juniman. Thanks for joining us again, gentlemen. And uh, we're really excited to, to have this piece of equipment. This tractor was at our High Plains Ag Expo. Uh, we now have duels on it, which is, yes. is good to see. <laughs> but uh, And a tillage tool. <laughs> yeah, and the, and the tool behind it. Uh, but this is the autonomous tractor, which was uh, highlighted at the High Plains Ag Expo. We, we said we'd have it out here ready for some demos and Luckily, over the last couple of days, we've been able to do that. Uh, last week was a little nicer when uh, it was 80 degrees out, but yeah. <laughs> uh, give it a shot again today, even after some good needed moisture. So that's good. Either one of you, what, what have you seen with it? Obviously, I think it worked well. We got the job done, right? Yep, it uh, works. It's an autonomous tractor. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, so we got it going middle of last week and we had some demos with some customers in the area with it. And we're pretty much just kind of learning, learning how to run it and what it can do and pretty much just learning ourselves how to yeah, how to get it set up, how to actually make it go autonomously in the field, kind of what it takes on the front side, um, what it takes to actually make it run out in the field, what happens when it stops, what what keeps it happy, what keeps it going, and then pretty much just everything about the machine and how to how to make it uh, effectively operate out in the field. So, yeah, what's made it stop? Like, what, what things? Unfortunately, are... <laughs> dust has been our biggest <laughs> crux right now. So, as yeah. you can see, that's it's it's quite the change of weather today. Right now, it's cool and cool and wet out, which is this is not the case last week. It was pretty much 80 and very very dry. So, dust was definitely our biggest hang up. Our first demo we did it was then going to be in some potato ground, and that was a little more sandy. So that was had some more moisture in that field. So that one we did really good on. So it didn't have near as much issue. But then we did one the next day, and it was pretty dang dry. So we did have some issues with dust and stopping like that. But the nice thing is with we learned with it too when it does have dust the, the tractor stops it kind of waits for things to clear out and then it pretty much reevaluates it picks up the tool backs up puts it back down and away it goes so pretty nice. much a seamless process so no matter if you're in the cab not in the cab or after yeah, not in the cab it's going to just keep on if it that's all it sees the dust it can you know work through that and keep on going so yeah yeah and, and press i know you and i were in the cab earlier just today going through the setup process what what does the setup process look like and how hard has that been it's been super easy. I mean, all you got to do is basically set up your auto path guidance. So if you want to pick a guidance sign that you're currently using for your heading or just pick a heading, as long as you got your autonomous boundary, your auto path set up, you basically just go into the auto turn, enable the turns for the full field. It generates its own path. We go to the autonomy uh, application, flip it on, and it basically says it's ready to go. So that's it's really easy and it just kind of takes off. The nice thing we have, what's the two different ways we can run it? We can either run it in the cab or out of the cab. Yep, yeah, you can pick whether you want to ride along or get out of the cab. If you're riding along, all you got to do is wait for it to be ready to go. Obviously the door closed and all that, but then just hit your resume switch and it takes off. If you want to get out of the cab, it'll tell you when to get out of the cab or that the operator is, is detected. Uh, we get out, we got to get away from that machine. It'll give us a green light on our app and then we just basically hit swipe and go and it takes off so and wear your seatbelt right yeah wear your seatbelt because that thing it, when it stops it's stopping so i was gonna say yeah so the feature yeah, like you talked about is right along which we've been doing a lot of that last week just to learn the system how it works so unfortunately yeah, for our demos last week didn't really even look like an autonomous tractor because you're riding along so much but it was actually still operating autonomously then we even let it go out go out on its own as much as we could but we did learn you know if you are riding along what's the one thing you want to do put your seatbelt yeah because <laughs> when it stops it stops it, there's no subtle way to it, unfortunately yeah. so yeah you even want to be careful if you got your seat swiveled all the way to the right when it stops it kind of pulls you to the left so. yep <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's very 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 safe and it's definitely leans more on the side of caution and safety than probably yeah not so sure. it, when it sees something that doesn't recognize it comes to a halt and a quick you talked about too how it when it does detect something in the field you know like we were working in a field of potatoes that had pivot tracks filled with white sand it detected that white sand it stopped the tractor and then the coolest thing about it is, like you said, it doesn't just continue going because as we know, speed is, is kind of key with these BTs. So when it does stop, it'll back up after it picks the implement out of the ground, set it back down and it'll get up to speed you know, before it hits new coverage. So that's exactly what you'd do if you were sitting in the seat and you yep. came to a stop. How far do you want to get away from, you know, you set this thing in the field, how, how far do you want to get away from it? Uh, it's usually about 50, 60 feet what we found. So it's definitely, it's got a nice little bubble around it. And if it sees anything inside that, you know, 
radius around it, it's going to tell you, hey, it detects an object, detects a human, you know, detects a vehicle, detects something it doesn't know of. So it's definitely very, very safe conscious. And yeah, you have to be well outside that area because we, at our second demo, we had a lot of people out there checking out and we had too many, probably too many pickups, too many people wanting around it. <laughs> we were probably, our efficiency wasn't very good that day. So, but it, we were shutting it off, so it was okay. But <laughs> that's something to be conscious of too, especially when we, we kind of found on the ends, like if he's, he's a pole or something like that too, it definitely can learn from that too but it's the first time it sees stuff like that it kind of has to you know hey what's that like i said it's very very much more safe conscience than uh just 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 go and figure out figure it out later so sure sure and then i guess as far as distance away from it too like would, would we want to set this in a field and drive five miles away or, or would we want to kind of stick around it a little bit well you could but probably not right now like i said we're still <laughs> still learning the system just like when auto track came out way back in the day you know guys were skeptical it was like how yeah, we had to kind of learn the system but now everyone's used to it just like everything else it's new it's definitely a whole different bear of a system that we haven't really had exposure to it's a way, lot different way of thinking about it and how the system works so so like back to your point yeah it's definitely something we have to kind of get a, get learned and once you get more comfortable with it you can probably kind of learn you know how the system works how it's going to work in your operation how it's going to work in our demos things like that too and then we can get more comfortable with it and be more you know comfortable you know just you know kind of setting it and forgetting it get all set up and pretty much let it do its thing and then maybe go probably not too far away because you never sure. yeah, probably in our case you get away then it have to see something and you have to stop and have to come back and double check it or something like that too but yeah you can definitely that's a nice thing you can pretty much set it and it'll pretty much do you can go a couple miles away if you want to so the nice thing what Preston talked about too before we have those different ways we can exit the cab too so a nice feature is you can actually before you get out of the cab if you do exit the cab you can turn that key off too so then when it gets the field all done or pretty much get the main rows done as much as you want it to you know like late at night that thing will pretty much you know go park to, back to its entrance points it'll sit there for a couple minutes five minutes idle down let it cool down and it'll actually turn that machine off too so if you do have an instance where it actually does have to stop and you have to come come get it going again or if it gets all done it'll turn that machine off automatically too when it's all done so yeah. what kind of things are you monitoring an op center you know as you're starting stopping and doing demos well number one why is it stopped <laughs> you know we, we hate idle time but you know unfortunately this machine does get quite a bit of idle time just because it has to stop and evaluate different things and then continue working but it's all reasoning is we want to learn right so we we want those images we want deer to learn kind of why is why is this thing stopping? What kind of things is it seeing? And then obviously get better over time. So that's gotta be the biggest thing we're looking at. But then something else I was gonna bring up too is basically with tillage, you're sitting in the cab, you're adjusting, you know, gang angle, you're adjusting wing pressure, basket pressure, depth, all those things. But if you're not in the cab, how are you gonna do that? The nice thing is, is if you got your phone with Ops Operation Center Mobile, you can actually be looking at the job that it's doing and actually remote adjust uh, this tool as it's going through the field so we had a lot of fun setting that up trying to <laughs> trying to just get a nice even even job with the tool on different field conditions and I think I enjoyed that probably the most. <laughs> in addition to that we have those remote capabilities but with with this what else can we do uh, we can actually control yeah. the display as well so hopefully that comes to other machines but we can not only RDA and see what that uh, display is showing but we can also take control of that display and poke through and you know, look at different things or make adjustments on the machine. Customers have asked about that for a long time. When can I actually control it? Well, with, with the autonomous machine, you, you finally can. Yep. yep. I think that'll come for other machines too, but uh, R RDC, remote display yep. control yep. is what it's called. So. Yeah, the, the, the crazy thing is when we were riding along getting used to everything, we all know that remote display access has kind of a little bit of lag too, maybe one or a second, but remote display control is almost instantaneous. So I was sitting there poking buttons on my phone and on display it was pretty much instantaneous but then on my phone that the, it was like a second away so it was kind of freaky to watch press that watch it change on there but not on my phone it's like a, <laughs> so so it does work it's pretty dang slick so yeah. but, i mean speaking of connectivity maybe what was this little white thing in the window up here what, that's our start that's our strolling for our the tractors <laughs> required for autonomy right yeah yeah i would say we're all highly encouraged or definitely what we, our first demo we did uh last week was definitely out and like i said a very cell challenging connectivity area and if we did not have that we probably wouldn't have been able to make it run because we have to have that constant connection to 
you know, sell and the op center for it to be, you know, make sure it's safe, make sure it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. So without that was kind of a, a godsend when we were running it. And that the cool thing is too, like I've said before, you could actually you know, hotspot your phone to it. So that was the best thing. So that's a full blown Starlink router on there. That thing has got some juice because I think we had the hotspot set up. This thing was pretty much all the way across the entire field, just 120 acre pivot on the opposite side. And I was still connected to the Wi-Fi on my phone. So that was pretty cool to see that not only was the tractor using that JDLink boost to run itself, but we were kind of using that to connect to the machine too. So that was very, very nice to have. So very, a very cool technology we have. Speaking of pivots, what did we learn there? They can see pivots, <laughs> which you're skeptical of, but no, it can definitely, it can definitely see them, so. So I think what we, what we kind of learned is if you got stuff boundaried out right, you know, like your pivot points and stuff like that, it'll actually root around those. You'll pick the tool up out of the ground, it'll steer itself around that obstacle, put it back down and away it goes, just like you would do if you were out there running it. Uh, if it's not boundaried around, you know, you know, such as like the pivot, the towers itself, yeah. it does think sometimes they're human. Uh, sometimes it just doesn't know what it is, but it can go through it. So it'll stop and you kind of got to intervene uh, manually from there. So yeah, but in that case, we found that like we've learned, like have a good, good autonomous ready boundary around the outside, but then go and map all your interior objects. So like in the R case, I just simply, before we got going that day, just went into the op center, just drew a little circle around the pivot point, the center of the pivot. And that's what Preston said. It was pretty cool to see when they were out there running it. Pretty much saw that. It drove, you know, pretty much calculated a little path around it. It picked up, drove around it, put it right back down, and kept on trucking. So if you got like the center of the pivot, got some tanks, got, you know, we have lots of wells around here, weird spots like that, or wet spot, you know, you don't want it to go, just put that interior boundary around there and it'll calculate pretty much if it has to either kind of go up to it, turn around, or calculate a path around it too so that was very cool very cool to see that work uh, like it's supposed to and auto track in reverse yep yep that's <laughs> with the tool tool yep. it does work yeah it does work so i don't think it's an operator yet but it's getting there right. so it's we got to start somewhere so <laughs> what about support so you know troy i know you and i have been on calls with with john deere a couple times a week uh just kind of going through what we're experiencing with aut autonomous uh, tillage and so we have that level of support you talked earlier about the the uh, we have third parties from deer that are actually looking at the images coming from yep. the machine and deciding whether or not it needs to stop or keep going. What other kind of support mechanisms have we seen with this tractor? So pretty much we're just uh, our own team and then, you know, our precision ag team, our product specialist teams, we're just trying to be kind of the front, I guess the front runners of it for right now, um, learn, learn as much as we can about it. And then that way when we have it, have these demos uh, throughout this year, just be kind of very knowledgeable about it. And then, but also, you know, as we, towards the future get more of these machines out pretty much trickle down that information make sure pretty much everyone across the dealership um, has the same level of you know you know competency and pretty much knowledge of the system too to know you know what makes it work uh, uh and and tick and things like that too so like i said we're we're trying to just get, learn it ourselves and then you know, the more we learn about it the more we can teach others about it too so that's kind of what we're why we had it out you now as soon as we could and that's why we're pretty much live on location today and <laughs> it's cold out here because we were trying to we wanted to run today but mother nature did not allow that today so but yeah we got out here and we showed it to some showed it to some customers and actually just showed it just trying to uh, doing going around a tall slate in a corner of a field um what we're doing until work of course because it's a little too wet for that too but yeah just pretty much showing it off and learning as much about it as we can right now so no and i appreciate your guys's efforts diving in and, and really understanding what this looks like and how it can fit into uh, our customers needs and, and again like we talked about the expo it's finding that that right customer that this is a right solution for them and, and understanding aut autonomy is not for everybody but when, when does a customer want to dive in and, and which customers really would find the most benefit of it yeah that's like what i said said a while ago too yeah so is this going to be the, the solution for everybody no is it going to replace you no know, all our workers no because i think this is going to be a cool tool in the toolbox it's going to help like i said reallocate a lot of our labor to more important things that a person has to do like like we figured out too like preston did did we enjoy being in that field last fr last friday no well, not, no it was not fun <laughs> so it was pretty much the point yeah it's like i there's no way in heck yeah no way that i would want to spend you know 
12, 13, 14 hours a day riding through that rough of a field. If you have, you know, something like this can just do it, yep. do it itself and you can just keep an eye on it from the comfort of the side of the field and go do other stuff, by all means, that might be, <laughs> might be a game changer for a lot of people. And the big thing, like I said, reallocating that labor to do stuff like, you know, work on a pivot, go kind of run around and do other stuff. And the cool thing we've been starting to think of too, even we were just talking this morning, the customer we're at right here, it's like a lot of guys, you know, how do you implement, you know, this tool into their operation right now? So. You know, a lot of guys around here, they strip till, but then some VT after, some maybe VT beforehand, and they come strip till, some do a lot of high speed discs. So maybe how could you, you know, thinking about it, you know, you don't want to, probably don't want to get too far away from the machine, but how could we utilize this machine next to what they're doing already? So almost run this in the same field as their strip tiller in front of or behind the strip tiller, things like that. So just trying to get, it's fun to just kind of think about how the gears are starting to turn, like how could they, implement into this operation yeah. versus just being, you know, just a tillage tool, they go out and set it, forget it. How can they kind of work, work in, you know, symbiosis with it in their operation, so. And not <laughs> only, not only tillage, but where is it gonna go from there, yep. right? So right away, uh, this customer, which we'll probably give him a shout out here yeah. later, maybe, um, he's already thinking about harvest. So what do we do with the grain carts or can we, can we make those grain, grain carts autonomous? And then, you know, obviously, branch out from there to the combines, to the sprayers. To yeah, the yeah, he was asking planters. about sprayers too. And then we were talking about, you know, the nice thing is too, we're, with all these cameras on here, we're pretty sure already collecting that data. We're collecting images, you know, what's what's this look like? What's a pole look like? What's a pivot look like? What's a trash bag look like? What's what's all this different stuff is? So the nice thing is collecting that information, but now we can take that same data, database, we can go put it on a sprayer, put it on a combine, you know, put it on, any other piece of equipment and then we pretty much you know hit the ground running when it comes to autonomy with everything else we're already getting the foundation for right now you know this will just help make it more this is going to get better like one of our guys on our team was saying last week you know it's just going to get better and better with time so just like scene spray it's just going to get better and better with time the more it learns the more uh, improvements the software has things like that too so you know so it's very basic right now but it's just give it give it five years though i'm excited to see where it's going to be so and i know they asked us what's next and and we we don't know the answer yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but share the same answer we, we told them that no we don't know what's next but we do know John Deere's goal is to have that fully autonomous cropping system for corn and soybeans by 2030 so it's being actively worked on hopefully we can get some information here pretty soon on, on what that will be next but uh, it will be an, one, another operation another piece that can be fully autonomized uh, going forward. So I don't know, so we've, we've said we've demoed this here on site today. So where are we at today, Preston? So we're on site here at State Line Ventures. I uh, want to thank Tim and Derek Schilke for having us here today and, and giving us the opportunity to, to do some filming uh, while we're here. So might have had to trick the, the tool a little bit to yeah. think that we were, <laughs> we were out here doing VT work just because we had some moisture over the weekend, but we got it worked out and they think it's pretty cool. Well, thanks guys for joining us. Really, again, appreciate your efforts getting this thing going and getting it out in the field. And to our team that's not on camera, there was uh, many people behind the scenes that, that got this going. So appreciate them as well. But uh, thank you for joining us again here on the Farmcast presented by 21st Century Equipment. And we'll see you on the next episode.